It is a great honor and a wonderful privilege for me to be able to introduce Jerry Ford as a member of the Texas Business Hall of Fame. Since graduating from SMU in 1966, Jerry embarked on a career path that created one of the most dynamic legacies of leadership in the areas of banking and financial services that this country has ever seen. His journey to this pinnacle has been characterized by a tremendous desire to be the best. For me personally, when I think of Jerry Ford, I think of a man who is creative, a man who's an innovator, a man who had the instinctive ability to recognize an opportunity and then make the very most out of that opportunity at every turn. In the sports world, we talk about certain players who have natural physical abilities and instincts that you simply can't coach or teach. They possess God-given gifts. Jerry's one of those natural wonders. Someone who was born with the natural ability and the drive and the skill to do it all. My father, who was my business mentor, always told me that you have to always figure out how to make one plus one equal three. Let me tell you tonight that there's no one that I've ever known who could do that type of arithmetic better than Jerry Ford. What he has done in the world of business has only been exceeded by his character. His concern for helping people who don't have the means to help themselves. An endless commitment to the medical community across this country that enriches and saves lives. An enduring love and support for his alma mater that is unmatched and unparalleled. Jerry Ford has set the bar high all across the board as a businessman, a family man, and a once-in-a-lifetime example of how to do things the right way in all walks of life. It gives me great pride to call him a friend and a confidant. It gives me great pleasure to call him a leader among his peers and an inspiration for future businessmen for generations to come. And it is with great admiration and respect that tonight I get to call my friend, Gerald J. Ford, the newest inductee into the Texas Business Hall of Fame. Growing up in the Texas Panhandle, Gerald Ford's mother and father exposed him to the importance of an education, the vitality of ranching, and the rigors of working in his father's auto body shop. I decided pretty early on I'd go to law school, and it was probably in the seventh or eighth grade when I was sweeping out the body shop and I saw the lawyers wearing coats and ties and air-conditioned offices in Pampa, and I said, well, that's what I'm going to do, and it inspired me that I didn't want to work in a body shop, and, and I worked in the, on the farms uh, uh, in the summers, and it inspired me that uh, I didn't want to ride a tractor the rest of my life. His parents enrolled him in school at Southern Methodist University. There, he received an economics and law degree. He worked as general counsel for the Dalton Corporation, and it was there he decided to build his own company. So at the age of 31, Ford and two business partners borrowed money and bought 64% of the First National Bank of Post for $1.2 million. Back then it was a little different than today in that then uh, there was no approval process to have a bank. So you, you bought the bank, you agreed to buy the bank, somebody agreed to sell it to you, and one day you didn't own the bank and the next day you did. So it was uh, exhilarating and frightening uh, in that I'd never had a background of really operating a bank, but it, it was getting to run my own business and that was meant everything to me. And uh, we pr proceeded cautiously uh, out of fear and ignorance and uh, it worked out. His investment in the small town of Post, Texas led to an avalanche of future bank acquisitions and a lucrative and fulfilling career. We had a healthy respect for regulation and we developed a strong credit discipline in how we operated the banks. And that was, uh, certainly I shared that view and we developed that sense as an organization and still have it today. He continued acquiring troubled banks throughout the state. He bought the first national bank in Lubbock and hired Carl Webb as its president. His vision is always crystal clear. He conveys it very well to everyone around and we all have a like-minded approach to what we need to do. I'd say consistency is one of the hallmarks of what we've done. He is the visionary. He is the one that sees the big picture. And he gives me and others a lot of latitude to go and run the businesses and really make them perform to the levels that we expect. If you have 
basically good information that you, through your due diligence process, you feel like you understand where the situation is, then you can determine what risk is acceptable to you. Ford has survived some of the toughest conditions that impact the volatile banking industry. Being healthy in an unhealthy world or two, being able to access capital in an unhealthy world. And, and then you've got to do the second part and that's apply the operational skills to, to, to come back and create a normal, uh, you know, a, a well operating financial institution. Over the next 18 years, Ford acquired 19 banks and formed the first United Bank Group Incorporated as a public holding company with approximately $4 billion in total assets. The company was sold in 1994 to the Northwest Corporation, currently Wells Fargo & Company. He later partnered with colleagues to form the first Gibraltar Bank, followed by the acquisition of the first nationwide bank and other financial institutions. Jerry never changes. His word is, 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 is as good as a thousand page document. If you shake hands with Jerry Ford and do a deal, that's the deal you're going to make. I think Jerry Ford is the quintessential American story. He uh, uh, came from a little town of very modest means and uh, has become enormously successful in business but not only in business, as we've said, in philanthropic areas and a number of other areas. And not only has he been successful, but he's helped a lot of other people be successful. A reminder of his devotion to his alma mater comes into view every time you enter the new Gerald J. Ford Stadium. His influence can be felt throughout the SMU campus, as well as other institutions, including the Weill Cornell Medical College at Cornell University. Jerry is, is really the kind of person that makes America great. He is successful. He creates lots of jobs for people where others can uh, have successful families and lives uh, that work with him. And then he gives a great deal of it uh, to the community and to institutions. That's what success means in Dallas, Texas.